know, I think one of the things that I really appreciated a lot was sitting in a room with other faculty who are sort of having similar, I mean, we were all working on slightly different, we were all there for slightly different reasons, but one, just the interaction with other faculty was really, really nice for me. You know, we don't have that opportunity really to ever talk about pedagogical issues um, amongst each other. You know, either we're talking administrative stuff or we're complaining about this or that. And so that felt like a real sort of positive, I would say, space to, to think about what we're doing when we're actually teaching and to think about it with some support. Um, it's really funny because even though I am teach video, um, I noticed that one of the things that other people were doing was they were putting together, um, what do you call those presentations, mm -hmm. screencasts, and um, um, they were using various like audiovisual tools and editing stuff and whatnot to put together um, coursework. And I didn't do any of that. And I think there were sort of two reasons for that. One is, is that one of the things that I realized was that there are so many tutorials out there. Um, there are so much information out there in what I do that the problem for me is not so much having material for the students um, as much as it is maybe filtering some of that material, um, sort, of, sort of help them figure out how to access material that's actually going to be useful. Um, but it also, allowed, I guess my focus was really more on, on the process of actually creating rather than it was on that delivery of, of content. So that was a little bit different. I think the other thing that was really, really helpful to me was having support of the Center for Teaching and Learning um, just for like thinking through some of the structure and thinking through some of the assignments and thinking through um, just how to organize some of it um, online and, and just having another human to bounce some of these ideas off was really, really helpful for me. The, the, the reading that we did was helpful for me to understand hybrid sort of in a bigger context. There's also, you know, there's a big discussion that's going on, you know, among fact, among in academia about this push toward more and more online and a real sort of questioning of, of how that works and whatnot. I was very sensitive to that, particularly in my department, which is particularly sort of negative about um, online delivery. And so it was really interesting talking, um, not to my immediate colleagues in film and television, but to the English department, to some of the other faculty and say, you know, no, it's not just about total online delivery. Um, so it gave me, so I think, sort of a bigger context to understand it in and a better way to talk about it, to talk about it as maybe some of these tools can actually be used to get closer to students rather than simply thinking of it as, as more and more and more distance. And I guess that was really key to what I was thinking about as I was doing this. You know, ultimately as we got going, the process wasn't that much different for each assignment in the sense that they're pretty compacted assignments. Um, um, and you, you don't have a whole lot of time to do them. And so a lot's being asked of students. Um, again, though, I think I'll just reiterate, it was, the, it was really incorporating the feedback both from students and from me that was the most effective. So a student could, would upload, um, we, we, we worked with a wiki. So say, a, let me, I'm trying to think of one of the projects. One of the, do you have any good examples? <laughs> How these open, not that to anybody, it was upload on this web cut. Right. People would see feedback. Right. Make revisions. Right. So, one of the projects that students did, and it's, it was um, I always have my students do a documentary portrait. And that means um, it's sort of, I guess it becomes sort of legendary because everybody who goes through my class ends up doing that. And it's really funny because it's like probably the hardest project that students have. Um, and you wouldn't really think so because you think when you started out, oh, I just have to go interview somebody and that's it, and then it's over. Um, but a couple of things happen in the context of that project. One of them is, is that the students get to know another human being, and so they feel a certain responsibility towards how they're gonna represent them. 
Um, and in this case, when we were doing this as a hybrid course, what we did is I set up a wiki so that students would upload a URL um, to their um, rough cut. And so all the other students could see that. They could see the rough cut and they could respond to it. Um, and that had, I think, two effects. One was that students got feedback, but the other effect was, was that I think it really served as a catalyst for other students. Because there'd always be one or two students who tried something or did something um, kind of interesting, and then students would look at that. So it's, again, instead of coming in after you've done all your work sort of on your own, in your own little hole, they would had this open public space, or at least public within the context of the class space, where they were able to share their work and get feedback. And um, I, I really love that. I love the way students, I mean, I think I really, the, the biggest thing that I loved about it was the way students fed off of each other in the class because they had that opportunity instead of just showing their piece at the end and having everybody go, oh, isn't that great? In this context, it was like, you could really see how people's work had, had moved. I remember Shanice's work. Um, I mean, I remember her piece actually pretty vividly. It really changed a lot throughout. A lot of all the students did. Yeah. Okay. So the unanticipated outcome was my constant failure to be able to organize a Blackboard site in a way that's understandable to anybody under the sun, um, because I get into my own understanding of how it works. And what I thought was when I did this class, I finally got it down. Like I had things organized into units. I had weeks in there. Um, but I just went back to go look at it this morning and I realized that the next time that I teach it, I'm going to sit down with somebody the summer before I teach and really figure out how do you, I mean, now that I really know the units that I want to teach, I, I really feel like I figured out a structure that works so much better than the way that I used to teach it. Um, but I really have to figure out how to make that really clear. And I don't mean dumbing it down. I actually mean like making it so that people really know where to go to, to um, hit stuff. Um, and I think actually during the class, we understood it. But again, going back and seeing that I didn't quite know where to go means that my guess is, is that to some students, it was still disorganized or still a little bit unclear. So that... I didn't anticipate to still be confused, <laughs> but I was. So I think I've already said it in the sense that what was most successful to me, this, the, the semester that I taught this course, I saw probably the best work um, that has come out of students taking that introductory class. And um, so I think that the most successful thing was, was that it not only upped the ante, um, well, it, it upped the ante, I think, for student work. Um, they shared, because they were sharing work, um, I think that they, they felt sort of a little bit of extra responsibility or extra sort of push to, um, to really do something. Um, so I think that was successful. I think the other thing that I was really trying to address was what we started out with, which was I really wanted to figure out some way that I could figure out that I could give them more feedback. And I found that having that opportunity to give feedback in process while they were working on their work, um, instead of just saying, make an appointment, come see me, um, and then sitting there and three people would show up instead of, whole class this way everybody in the class was accountable and they're accountable not only to me but they were in a sense accountable to other students in the class because they were at being asked to not only show their work but also to respond to other students work and so I think that that mixture um, really helped make it uh, successful from my point of view um, and in terms of the hybrid structure um, what worked was it allowed me to work with a much smaller group of students at one time. And so that made my personal interaction, even though you might say, oh, you met with them less time, it made it, um, I think that, that there was, it was a lot more in-depth in that short period of time. And then because I was responding online and we were talking back and forth online, you know, I think that that interaction, um, my sense is, is that it, it, it worked 
pretty well, and it can still improve. I feel like I'm sort of like sounding like a broken record at this point, um, because I my hope is is that the I, I, my hope is is that the benef the benefits for the students were that they were more invested than they typically are in that class, and they were more invested because of um, their sort of ownership, but also that they saw their own process and progress online. Um, it was there there for them to see, for them to track. It's there, you know, when I went back this morning looking at rough cuts and final cuts, it was it was actually pretty exciting. Um, and I think when I you sort of I mean I oftentimes walk out of that class feeling really disappointed. Um, just sort of feeling disappointed that somehow you know, here we are at the end, I don't I, I don't know if they got anything. And this time I really felt like they we because of that there was more opportunity for them to get something. I also think they're really pushing students off to do, um, to, I, I'm really uh, an advocate of going out and figuring out how to do stuff on your own. And it doesn't mean that you do it without support. It doesn't mean that you don't, that you do it without direction, but to get into that habit of going out, if you have a particular piece of technical information that you want to understand, going out and really figuring it out, figuring out how to do it. So my hope is, is that students were also pushed in that direction. And I think the other thing, I think students were putting up um, um, some, I, I, th I think that that was public, actually I'm not sure, um, some of their thing, I'm just trying to think whether, when they went out and actually create, when they went out and and were looking for um, tutorials and whatnot, if they shared them, I don't remember. You didn't share them, so you were just sharing them with me. I know that every once in a while, what I would get was I would get an email from somebody who said, um, you know, I found this really really great tutorial, or here's this uh, website that has a lot of good tutorials, and I could put that then up on the home page. And I also had a technical resources page. So yeah, that idea that when you're when you're working in, in, with technology, you can figure it out. I, mean, I actually had a colleague today. This was kind of aggravating because I'm the tech person. People sort of think that I'm the tech person. So I had a colleague who was emailing me about, well, I can't find this, and I, can't, and I finally just said, you know what? I can't help you right now. And it's like, go figure it out. <laughs> so I think it's, I, I, I hope that some of it pushed students in that direction too. Um, one of the things that I did, um, was able to do doing the hybrid, um, doing this hybrid format was to give a few readings um, in a way that I wasn't, it wasn't quite as easy when I had the larger class. Um, so I did give students some readings, like in some very traditional um, classic film theory, um, some Eisenstein about, you know, editing, um, um, had them look at some, actually I had them look at previous students' work and look at it in the context of reading um, about uh, editing by an a early um, 20th century Soviet filmmaker and writer Sergei Eisenstein, and they looked at. So that was that was fun combining contemporary work with with those terms and words that that already existed. So I liked um, I liked being able to bring in aesthetics that way, and I think that it made a difference. How would I compare the performance of students in the hybrid class? to traditional version of your course. I think what I said before was that, that seriously the best projects that I've had come out of this class came out of this particular session. And every class is different. You know, sometimes it has to do with the group of students. Sometimes it has to do just, you know, there's a particular zeitgeist out there that works in various ways. Um, but I've never sort of seen consistently this, this the level of what I, I think consciousness about what they were producing. Even if it's not all perfect, it's not all going to be perfect. But at least there was a consciousness about what was working and what wasn't working, and there was a real awareness of what other students were doing and how how that was working that I appreciated.
One of the things that happened to me was I think that, that doing um, the intro class in hybrid format actually informed a little bit of how I taught um, the advanced class um, this past semester. And just really thinking about, again, how to do that process step and having students uploading stuff early on and um, spending more time workshopping. One of the things that happens in an academic context, I think particularly when we're doing um, production, is it's a really unnatural format for doing production, for doing creative work. And so you're always sort of figuring out, like, how do I, how do I squeeze this stuff that I know really takes like two or three days of just like concentrated work, like in a studio or sitting around with a group of people? How do I squeeze that and stretch that over a semester into this unnatural sort of um, match? And so I guess what I did in the advanced class this, this semester was took some of that um, uploading your rough cut, uploading your work in progress and giving feedback. And again, also asking students to do um, some self-guided um, tutorials. So it is a, it's, it's a format that, while it might not be a full hybrid, there were certain, certainly lessons that I took from, from that that I'll experiment with. I think the big thing that I'll, I want to really work on is, again, just the website structure, the Blackboard structure, and really making that, um, making it really clear to students. So what advice would I give to faculty who are considering developing a hybrid course? The biggest thing for me was really identifying what the issue is that you are attacking um, when you're working on the hybrid course. And, you know, from my group of people, there was such a wide range of um, issues that people wanted to address through the hybrid um, process. But I think just, the, just having that key, really identifying that for yourself and keeping that focused.